My name is Joyce Ruff, and I've just written a new book called Fragments of Your Ancient Name, 365 Names for the Divine. And each of these is a 10-line reflection on one of the names, followed by a suggestion of how to reflect on that name during the day. I searched for a long time for the title for this book. I had all of the reflections written, and I still couldn't come up with a name. And I thought, what a title for the book, which is kind of ironic. You know, here I have all these names, and I can't come up with a name that's the title of the book. I knew it had to be something that really spoke to the great diversity um, that was in the book, the many different, the variety of names that, that I had come up with and that I had found, the sources I had found. And one day I was reading um, Rainier Maria Rilke's poems. I, I like his poems very much. And these poems were from a book called uh, The Book of Hours. And as I was reading through the book, I came across this poem that I had read so many times before. And it was just the moment where it connected for me and I thought, this is it. So I'd like to read the poem for you and I think you'll understand why I got the title for the book. This is at the very, yeah, it's printed in the very beginning of, of the book. I read it here in your very word, in the story of the gestures with which your hands cup themselves around our becoming, limiting, warm. You said live out loud, and die, you said lightly, and over and over again, you said be. But before the first death came murder, a fracture, rose, a fracture broke across the rings you'd ripened a screaming shattering the voices that had just come together to speak you, to make of you a bridge over the chasm of everything. And what they have stammered ever since are fragments of your ancient name. When I read that last line and what they've stammered ever since are fragments of your ancient name, I thought that's exactly what, what I've been trying to, to, to get across in this book. So when Rilke uh, writes, you said live out loud, and die you said lightly, and over and over again you said be, it's like when humanity was created, there was that natural process of life, death, and then rebirth. But what was broken, and I think he's referring to Cain and Abel, that murder, and it fractured this, and so it, it broke that oneness that humanity had with divinity. And so, that it's very powerful imagery, a screaming, shattering the voices that had just come together to speak you. It's like they had just discovered who this divine presence was and then it was broken. And so what they've stammered ever since are fragments of your ancient name. And so it's like all these different names are glimpses that people have been searching for this divinity and how do they enter into communion and relate? And this, this, I think Rilke just captures it really very well. And after I read that poem later on, I remembered the Jewish, um, I don't know if you call it their philosophy or their belief, but they have a word called tikkun, T-I-K-K-U-N. And they believe that in the beginning of the creation of the world this, was this wonderful vessel of light and then this vessel was broken and it shattered into millions of pieces and so there's all these little pieces of light everywhere and their sense of coming into wholeness and oneness with divinity is bringing all those pieces of light back together so in a way those pieces of light are like the fragments you know we're we're all searching for that brokenness that i think humanity experiences and and trying to know who is and who is this divine presence and and what does this divine presence mean in my life it was a wonderful experience writing the book because I didn't realize how much it would do for me personally in reflecting on these many, many facets of, of who, who the divinity really is. One of the things that I think has helped my book a lot with, my, with readers is that whenever I write a book, I take my manuscript to a variety of people and I ask them to read it and see whether or not it relates to their life and whether it relates to their spirituality. Because one of my great concerns has always been as a writer that I try to connect spiritual life 
with the totality of life. I think the totality of life really is our spiritual life, but I don't want religion or spirituality to, to be here and the rest of life over here. When someone reads my books, I want them to be able to feel like it's really speaking to them, that it means something in their life. That that has always been my focus. I want what comes forth from me in words to connect with the reader in a way that they can say, yes, I, I know this deep down, that we're more alike than different at that level. I've been writing for at least 25 years now, and if I was writing the same now as I was writing 25 years ago, I shouldn't be writing. <laughs> because uh, when I started writing, I wouldn't say my world was narrow at that time, but I think my view of divinity was quite limited. And I have seen that grow and expand in so many ways, um, particular, particularly, I think, in my sense of who this divine presence is in my life. So I think in that way, um, my writing is the foundation of it is the same, but I think my expression of it has changed, and, it, and certainly we live in a world that is um, much more global than it was 25 years ago when I started writing. Uh, spirituality is greatly influenced by the movement of the new sciences, quantum physics, for example, that now shows that we are connected, you know, in, in um, scientific ways as well as spiritual ways and so that's going to influence I think how it does influence how I look at life and um, how I write about life so I think I I think I'm a different writer today in some ways and yet I think I'm foundationally the same writer at least I hope that's that's true <laughs>